Protein is a nutrient needed in the body for growth and cell development. We get protein from foods like beans, milk, eggs, animals like fish, and meat. On this week's episode of Community Report, we're looking at the community of aquaculturists. These are professionals who have mastered the craft of fish farming. Welcome to Community Report and Channels Television and Victoria is Joe. Nigeria imports fish annually to meet up with the protein intake that's lacking in most of the Nigerian meals. In 1944, aquaculture, a branch of agriculture which is also known as fish farming, started in Nigeria. The advent of fish farming in Nigeria has improved the agricultural sector of the country. Notable amongst the fishes that are reared are the tilapia fish and codfish, which contains more than 40% of the animal protein essential for growth. At Gilbert David's farm, Omowa Adeyemi, a graduate of agricultural engineering, with interest and passion, runs this fish farming business. It's been four years, enough time to learn the ropes of the business. I'm aquaculturist, so a layman fish farmer, and I've been to this business for the past four or five years, and this is where we are presently, and we have a place we are going. Over the years, Nigeria practiced traditional methods of aquaculture in tridal poles, but recently, there's been the introduction of cages, otherwise known as ponds. Apart from the earthen ponds known as swamps, ponds are usually either treated wood, concrete, or PVC plastic oh, ranging nice. from a few hundred liters to several thousand cubics. The popularity of the use of swamps has grown. Adeyemi is one of the few who have mastered its use. This comes with its advantage. Actually, it's been challenging. I started from up there, where we build a vat. And during the course of throwing those fishes, it's quite expensive. You know the situation of the country. We face electricity problem and pumping the water. Sometimes in a day, I use seven to eight hours without light. And you know the cost of running the generator. So I just think and say, well, if I can still be in business with this little I'm doing, let me look for an alternative that is uh, cheaper than what I'm doing. So that was what led me into swamp area. Every fish farming stage starts from the hatchery. I know Acha is also in charge of hatchery. And hatchery is hatching of eggs under artificial conditions in a poultry or fish for, consumer, for consumption purpose. To become a fish farmer, basic knowledge of fish farming is needed. Actually, before you go into fish free, I will employ your advice. You need basic knowledge. You know, it's just like education. The purpose of going to school is to go and seek knowledge on a particular feed. Likewise, fish free, you need knowledge. You cannot just bring millions and say you want to invest in fish. So you need to know a start, some certain things. For example, if you are going to fishery, you need to understand water management. You know, those are the basic things that you need to know before you go into it. To survive and grow, the fishes must be fed using different feeding pattern. From the day you stock from juvenile to four weeks, you have to start with floating feed. And floating feed, we have, we have local floating and imported. So those imported are alakwa, ecopens that we use because of the percentage of the protein. Because fishes need protein to grow up quickly. With a lot of strength and carefulness, a two-man team enter into the swamp pond to get fishes out for customers. We evacuate all the water 
and you can see the ground. So it's easy to scoop, but we have a lot of water now, so it makes it difficult. Thank God, we are able to bring some house. They are close to three months old. In the next one month, it might show for sale. Presently, the average size is 600, 700 kg, and we are going to 1 kg. If you achieve 1 kg per fish, it's ready, it's good for sale. It's very expensive. But when we come down here, we dug the pond, we started on a brighter note. But on the long ground, we have issue with flood. And apart from flood, in the markets, when we started, we have so many adulterated feeds. So that's a challenge. Sometimes we are putting money inside the water, and you are not sure of what you are getting back. You know, it's been very challenging. And the community as a whole are not even helping because we've gone to local government, we sit with the CDA, that how best they can create, uh, create an enabling environment for us. But at least with the little experience I've been able to gather over the years, we have been steadying the ship gradually, and at least with the glory of God, we are seeing business today. With no record of a total number of fish farmers in Nigeria, we meet others developing the industry. Jordan Agawonye, a graduate of physiology, inherited the business from his father. I started this business some years ago. My dad was the one doing it before. So after I finished school, I tried looking for a job, but I couldn't get a good one. So I decided to take it over. And since then, the business has begun to grow from where it was to a bigger level now. With a team of specialists, Jordan runs his day-to-day -day activities morning, on the farm. Um, today is a good day. So what we do first, bring out the home sales, uh, bring out some fish. Um, Ibrahim, you hope you've changed the pond. Yeah, you changed. So you can start feeding. Uh, we'll start with these ones. You can pour it. So you do something similar to the other three. Other two there. Reproduction is an aspect of fish production which is important on this farm. So hashri first thing you have to do is to get matured female and male fish. Matured female and male has to be a year and above in age. You know. So you take the female fish, you press out the eggs into a bowl, you kill the male, extract the milk, you get the milk, extract the juice from it, use it to mix the female egg. Then after mixing, then you prepare a vat where you want to spawn it. So that vat you must affect the water at least a day before. You spread the eggs on it inside the water. So once the, after 24 hours, the eggs will hash. So the fishes will pass through the net. They go to the bottom, but the eggs will remain on the net. So that way you can be able to separate the eggs from the fishes. For a healthy leave-in, the fish pond is washed and water is changed regularly. After harvesting all the fishes, you leave the pond for a day to dry. When it gets dried, you scrape the algae, the dried algae away from the pond, wash it with soap and water, then use salt to sterilize it. 
then you fetch water in it. But it's due to concrete ponds, you check for cracks, see anywhere you can patch before you put the new badge of fishes. So yeah, after doing that, you soak it with water for a day. Drain it, put fresh water again before you put the fish. Running a fish farm like this comes with its challenges. Well, there are different problems that come with catfish. First, if there's lack of vitamin like vitamin C, you'll notice crack on the skulls and bloated stomach. So you know there's something wrong with it. So you treat for lack of vitamin and also for infection. But most times, when it's irregular about the fish, you know there's something wrong. If their movement is not as fast the way it is, or their skin is not as dark the way it's supposed to be, or there are injuries, you notice some spots of injury around them, you crack on the skull, so you have to take note of any little slight change in their behavior so that you'll be able to catch the disease on time. Because when you neglect it, by the time it spreads around, it will be too bad, and by then it will be hard to contain. There are different kinds of medications. When you go to the vet store, you just lay your complaint to them. They'll tell you the regular drugs you are supposed to use because you can't use all kinds of drugs for them. They have their own specific drugs, the one the government has accepted for farmers to use. So you ask your local vet for it. They will tell you what is wrong with your fish and advise you how to use the drugs. Let's meet Mac Morgan Wokoma, an agriculturist. He has mastered the use of tarpaulin ponds instead of the traditional ponds. Um, I've been doing this for three years, and um, by the grace of God, everything has been going well. I chose fish farming out of all the others because fish is an essential diet in our average meal in Nigeria, and so there's always a demand for the fish in the market. And in terms of catfish, catfish is very affordable. So it's easy for everyone to afford, both middle class, both lower class, and everybody. So I choose catfish, but there's always a ready market to uptake. With several varieties to pick from, the preference of the fish farmer determines his stock. There are different fishes to be read. You have catfish, you have tilapia, you have oysters, whatever it is, but every farmer has to focus or narrow it down to what exactly they can deal with. For me, it's convenient for me to wear the catch kit because I know what and what it takes to do that. So, and they are easy to breed because they are rugged, they can adapt to any environment. For the other fishes, they are a bit more delicate, so I wouldn't want to bother myself with all that. Feeding is important to the fish. So in terms of the feed, they are different sizes. From the fingerling stage where we use like the 0.5 to 1.5 or 1.2, depends on the size of the fingerlings, whether they are good fingerlings or not. And then we have up to 9 mm pellets. So for each phase, we have different pellets. From there, we have 2 mm, we have 3 mm, we have 4 mm, 5 mm. And when I mean mm, I'm talking the size of the pellet. A clean pond means a clean fish. When it's time to sell the already mature stock, scaling is an important aspect to weigh the fish to know the correct price. So what we have here at the dry size in the basin, we have put them on the scale, and what we have about three sizes that make up one kid. And a healthy fish means a healthy pocket.
we meet Obalusi Ajayi, who is also a fish farmer. He specializes majorly in fish processing. This is how dried catfish is made. It takes three days for me to dry a whole of this oven of fish. Because if the fire is too much, the temperature has to be uh, rated. At the first, it will be high. Then later, gradual. I started this one three days ago. With the help of charcoal, he uses the traditional oven to smoke the fish. For 15 years, this farm has continued to produce large amounts of fishes, distributed and sold globally. I process it for people, so they bring, if I don't have fish for processing, then I charge them per kilo of what I dry for them. And I also do bring from my pond to dry, process and package and sell to people. From here, I send to Abuja, send to Ikiti package, then I give to them a discount rate, which they will sell and also get their own profit. When the fish is fully developed, cutfish can be made into different delicacies, from the cutfish pepper soup to the cutfish barbecue and to this. A lot of challenges come with it. There are challenges from production, majorly the terrain that we found ourselves, the swampy area. So it really uh, a battle during the uh, rainy season because of flood. So when flood comes, so it you know, uh, sets the whole farm away and we lost you know, major part of our fishes you know, to, the, to the flood. So and not only that, uh, feed for fish is another area. Since uh, the problem of uh, Boko Haram in the north, that really affected us, because that's where major part of our input, like soya beans, maize, and some other greens are coming from. So since their problem started there, so the cost of feeding has really gone up. Having the pond is one thing, getting customers to buy the product is another. Yes. Through uh, referral, those that I've worked for, you know, they get if somebody wants to dry fish, so those farmers, everywhere they buy fish, some people need, where can I get fish dried? Those who have gotten my contact, even up to VI. Mm -hmm. And they will uh, get me on phone and just call that. I got your phone number from so so person. I want to dry fish. Then all our customers, those who are coming to buy wet fish, those women that are coming in the market to come and buy. So most of them do sell us outside friendly people where they buy fish. So through that, many people are coming here. If it is done a week, we sell three times in a week and need a fresh fish, Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. So because of that, people are coming here in their numbers. The process of fish farming takes months before it becomes eatable. That process takes a lot of nurturing, feeding, and cleaning. The catfish pond, from day one that you put catfish in the pond, you have to caution them into a particular place where they'll be eating. Because if you stretch the street, not all of them will be able to take it. And some of them will be confused. But when you caution them and tell them that this is where you'll be eating on daily basis, before you get to the farm, they are there before you when they are hungry. So anytime you are passing and you see them rushing there, shows that they need to be fed. Then you feed them from that, uh, from that, uh, that place. So all the fish, uh, just like a baby, you let them know they are dining table, where they eat. So that is what you have cautioned them to be.
These are necessary tools needed to run a successful fish farm. Part of the equipment to need for fish free, one is pumping machine. And pumping machine has two outlets. It has suction outlet and discharge outlet. As you can see, this hose, this is the suction outlet. With the help of the hose and the suction valve that is inside the water, we, if we start the machine, it will suck the water and go into the machine through the discharge uh, pipe. It will come out and the water is going to the drainage and the water inside the pond will be going down gradually. This is an example of a pH meter. Although this is a multimeter, you can use this to test the pH of the water, the salinity of the water, the conductivity of the water, and temperature of the water. You can also use it to test the hardness of the water, how hard or soft the water is. So it's very necessary for an asha to have something like this. So you can use to monitor the water you use in ashing. Because the change in any of those parameters can lead to mortality of those fishes. It's a bit expensive, but it's a necessary tool. So I advise all farmers to try and get their test out. So when using it, first, whatever item you want to put the fish in, you first key in that item into the scale. So this is the bath you want to use to weigh the fish. This bath is about one kilo. So first I will key in the weight of the bath into the scale by tapping zero. So now it's as balanced as zero. So anything you put inside the bath now, we show as the reading. So you can put the fish now. So this is a one kilo fish, standard table size. So look for a bigger one. And so that is a 1.2 kilo fish. So you can see the weight showing 2.2. So just put everything inside this one. Fish farming has grown over the years in Nigeria, but mechanization of the industry will go a long way to improve the output of farmers. Well, as you can see, anyone can be a fish farmer. All you need is information. I'll do it for us on the program today. Thank you so much for watching. If you missed any part of the show or other episodes, you can check it on our YouTube channel. You can also send your comments to the social media handles showing on the screen. Until I see you next week, be good.